switchman's job is a responsible one. He must determine which is the clear track. The right way leads to safety, the wrong to disaster. Here's a decision of life or death. There should be no guesswork about it. He must know. He must recognize the danger signal and throw the switch in the right direction for a clear track ahead. You too are a switchman. By what you do or don't do, you can determine your future and the future of those you love. It may even be a matter of life and death, as in the Dole family. That's John Dole, just an average American at the head of the table. John's a happy man with a good job, a comfortable home, and with almost enough money saved to start building the house that he and Mary have long dreamed of owning. And this, of course, is Mary, the girl next door who married John and hand in hand throughout the years has been his devoted wife and helpmate. As for the rest of the Doe family, this is Bob, a typical boy who does a fairly good job at school and doesn't get into too much trouble. Last, but by far not the least, is Jane, who thinks that Mommy is the prettiest lady and Dad the nicest man in the whole world. Yes, all's peace and quiet on the Doe family front, with many, many good things to come and everything to look forward to. But what's this? Bob doesn't miss a thing, and that sore is still on Dad's lip. Why don't you have that fixed up, Dad? If it was on my lip, I'll bet you'd do something about it. Mary, too, has been concerned about that little sore. For most of them, healed in a short time, but this one seems to be getting worse. Why don't you drop in and have Dr. Benjamin take a look at it, she urges. Oh, forget it, Sir John. Nothing to it. You know I've never been sick in my life. Besides, I've had other sores that have healed, and just because this one is taking a little longer, I see no reason for all this excitement. Skip it. Forget it. It's nothing important. Skip it, says John. All right. Let's skip on to a few weeks later and a quiet evening at home. By the way, says Mary, when you shave in the morning, don't you notice how ugly that sore on your lip is becoming? Wham! That did it. John seems to be quite irritable lately. Of course I've noticed it, he says. I think I'm old enough to take care of myself. Here, look. One of the men at the plant told me about this salve that heals all kinds of sores, and I've been using it for a couple of days already. Mary is not impressed and says, that black gooey mess? Seems to me it's getting worse instead of better. Well, give it a little time, growls John. Besides, if this one doesn't work, I'll try some others. There are plenty of other salves on the market. Perhaps so, replies Mary, but maybe you won't get the right one, if there is a right one. Besides, I'd feel much better if you'd go in to see Dr. Benjamin. Gosh, Mary, stop worrying. If it doesn't get any better, I'll go in and see the doctor a little later on. And here we are, just a little later on, weeks later on, weeks more of delay. Mary seems pleasantly surprised when John comes into the kitchen and offers to help. Little Jane thinks this is a good time to ask for that new dress they saw in the store window. But Dad says, mm, no can do right now, because all the spare money went into papering and painting the upstairs and buying the new bedroom set. Lately, John seems a little subdued. Perhaps it's because that sore is getting worse. And besides, he's noticed another sore or lump in his neck. Well, even a devoted wife can stand just so much, and then she simply must let off steam. Listen here, John Doe, there'll be no more dilly-dallying around. Tomorrow, rain or shine, you're going to see Dr. Benjamin. You've delayed entirely too long already in finding out what this is all about. And so, after weeks of delay, John eventually gets to the doctor. Hmm, says the doctor, without much question, that is cancer of the lip, and markedly advanced, too. 
It's off to the hospital for you, John, while I have an examination made under the microscope for part of this sore. There's no delay now, but it seems to be too late. The doctor has to tell Mary that had John come in to see him earlier, he would have had a 95% chance of being cured. But now, after all the delay, he can't offer much encouragement. However, he'll do the very best he can. Not many weeks later, poor Mary is entirely on her own. The fullback of the Doe family team is missing, and she has to carry the ball all alone. Oh, she got a job all right. Bob helps take care of Jane, but it's not the same with John not there. If he'd only known the danger signals that might mean cancer, and it acted on them, how different things might have been. Speaking of danger signals, let's return to our switchman. When he really knows his danger signals, when he acts promptly to protect lives and throws the switch for a clear track ahead to health and happiness. Let's look in on the Doe family again and see what happens when John recognizes the warning signal and acts at once. Remember that first night when Bob and Mary spoke about the small sore on his lip? Remember how he said, oh, forget it, skip it. Remember how, through lack of knowledge, indecision, and delay, he wrecked the whole Doe train? Well, that's what would have happened if Mary hadn't seen that small circular at the drugstore that afternoon and brought one home to show John. Well, what do you know, exclaims John as he reads the circular and calms down a bit. Maybe you're right. Perhaps I'd better drop in on Dr. Benjamin just to be on the safe side. And while we're on the subject, Mary, you'd better come in along, too, for a checkup. Uh, get the doctor on the phone. Find out if he can arrange to see us in the morning. Dr. Benjamin seems quite pleased that John came in to see him so early. You see, it's half of practicing medicine to be able to see people early, when something can be done. It's like the old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. In cancer of the lip, 95% can be cured when they're detected and treated early. The doctor is suspicious that it is cancer, and on the assumption that it is, until proven otherwise, he'll have a small part of it examined under the microscope. If it is, he'll use one of the three accepted means of treating cancer, X-ray, radium, or surgery, or a combination of the three methods. It won't take long, and John will only be laid up for a few days, Here we are again, just three weeks later, with the Doe family team still intact. John has been back on the job, and with a promotion coming up, he's already making plans for that dream house he's going to build for Mary and the kids. Through making the danger signals of cancer known, Mary too is able to plan for the future. Her thoughtfulness in bringing the circular of warning signals home and calling it to John's attention is the reason why the family is still happily united. As for Bob and Jane, all they know is that Dad's here and Mommy's here and everything is dandy. Yes, they probably just feel warm, snug, secure, and happy about the whole thing. Cancer can often be cured. The hope of cure lies in early detection by the individual and the physician. You owe it to your family and yourself. See the difference between early treatment and when cancer is moderately advanced. There are only three recognized means of treating cancer. They are surgery, x-ray, and radium. So be an alert switchman. Cancer is curable if caught in time. Know your danger signals. Don't take a chance. Don't gamble. Don't doubt. Find out. 50,000 to 80,000 people can be saved every year in the United States 
If the danger signals of cancer are made known to them, and they act at once if one develops, use the knowledge and skill that's at the command of the medical profession. A thorough examination by your family physician is your best assurance that you will be counted among those who are saved. Throw the switch in the right direction for a future of health and happiness.